Hi. So I'm back with the next module of ITL, that is uh, module six. And uh, in this module, uh, we would speak about uh, the important uh, service delivery practices. Those are called ITL practices, uh, which have evolved in last uh, over two decades. And uh, how these uh, uh, you know, ITL practices have been uh, deployed in various service delivery situations and the organizations have benefited immensely out of these uh, uh, practices. So let's discuss about uh, some of them in this module. So there are 18 important practices that we would discuss uh, in this module of uh, practices. Uh, the other uh, uh, practices which are listed in this, we would not speak about from the perspective of the ITL framework. So these practices are categorized amongst uh, three primary groups, uh, general management practices, service management practices, and uh, technical management practices. So let's uh, discuss about some of these in the subsequent uh, slides. One of the most important uh, practice is about uh, service level management. This specific uh, practice allows uh, the service provider and the client both to ensure that the, the service level agreement, which is uh, part of the contract, those uh, SLAs are uh, met. Those SLAs are reviewed periodically, uh, generally once in a month amongst uh, the uh, right uh, stakeholders and uh, as per the governance framework. And then uh, those SLAs are discussed and uh, ensured that uh, uh, month after month, those SLAs are met. And in case of any differences, whether those SLAs are difficult to be achieved or they have not been achieved, or uh, certain data points are not working properly, or tools are not reliable, et cetera. In those cases, discussion has to happen between the client and the service provider. And uh, the service provider needs to ensure that there's a right, right understanding between both the teams and uh, the service levels agreements are observed month after month, right? So this role of service level manager is very important because this role ensures that uh, the uh, any kind of negotiation, if really required uh, on a certain parameter or SLA has to be uh, agreed and uh, both teams should be in sync with uh, any new parameter that is agreed for, right? So both the teams have to kind of make sure the reviews are going properly. The relationship management, which is a very important aspect of service level management, Yes, that relationship should always be uh, good, should always be kind of positive, right? Uh, just to ensure that, you know, services are del delivered in the right uh, uh, setting, right environment, so that client is positive uh, about the service provider and client is quite satisfied uh, with, the, with the quality of the services which are being made available. So when we are thinking of uh, service level management, uh, these agreements become very important. Service level agreement, operation level agreement, and underpinning contract. When we think of service level agreement, these agreements are between the client and the service provider. Agreement between the client and the service provider. So as simple as that, service level agreement is uh, observed between two organizations, between the client and the provider. Operation level agreement is uh, between the two different teams of the service provider. These two different teams are basically one team which is front-ending the organization in various discussions with a client, which you can call them as an account management team or the marketing team, which has taken the responsibility of ensuring that the service level agreements are met. So this agreement is between the account management team of the service provider and the actual service creators team. For example, the account management team of the service provider might have uh, uh, agreed for a certain uh, operation level agreement with the networking team, another operation level agreement with the server uh, team or and the desktop uh, laptop support team and so on. The account management team might have multiple OLAs with various other service creators teams. Based on these OLAs, 
the account management team of the service provider would be able to commit to the customer that we would be able to meet certain level of SLAs. Let's come to the underpinning contract, which are basically the supporting agreements that the service creator group, service creator team of the service provider organization would have with various other entities outside the organization. When I'm saying outside the organization, then these third parties would basically provide various kinds of supporting services to the service provider organization, right? To ensure that the service provider team has all the necessary uh, you know, requirements met. For example, the spares management services could be provided, could be supported by another uh, third party organization. The spare uh, hardwares could be provided by another organization. Let's say the Wi Fi services could be provided by another organization, and so on. And this allows the service creators team, which is a part of the service provider organization, to ensure that uh, OLAs would be met. With the, uh, with the account management team of the service provider organization. And in turn, account management team would be able to support the SLAs which, has, which have been committed to the client, right? So this is how the entire uh, flow works. All these three agreements are super important from a service delivery perspective, service level agreement, operation level agreements, and underpinning contracts. Let's speak about the availability management. Another very important aspect of uh, service uh, management framework. Availability management uh, uh, basically uh, you know, encapsulates all the necessary preparation which is uh, required uh, on behalf of the service provider, right? Uh, for example, ensuring that all the people are available, ensuring that the tools are functional and uh, they are uh, engaged properly in providing the services to the client, ensuring that uh, whatever availability commitment that has been given to the client. For example, client might have been given uh, the availability of services 24-7, 365. So the services will be available 24-7, 365. That means all the hours, irrespective of any leaves or any uh, break in the services. Now, the service provider team has to make sure <clears throat> that the necessary preparation has been done on their part to ensure that these services are available. So then they would have the people coming in various shifts. They would have to make sure that uh, they have spare uh, hardwares because uh, when the services are being provided in all the hours, 24 seven, then uh, the load on, uh, uh, on the hardware might be more. So sufficient spares, efficient distribution of spares have to be handled across locations of the client's organization. So all the necessary preparation has to be done by the service provider uh, organization, ensuring that the committed availability is met as per the requirement of the customer. So uh, availability management looks quite simple, but uh, in the background, there's a lot of work involved, right? Now, the preparation could be not just people, but ensuring that all the processes are working, all the tools are working, all the necessary uh, equipments are working, right? And uh, in case they're not working, you have people available to take care of them. For example, let's say the important firewall. Firewall is not working, let's say, in the uh, night hours, in the, in the night, <clears throat> right? And you have to have people available who can uh, quickly replace the firewall, or you have to have some arrangement with the third party who can uh, uh, replace the firewall immediately, or, or you have to have people, uh, the technicians who, who are uh, you know, trained on, on working on those equipments and who can take care of resuming the services as and when required. So idea is that uh, availability of the services must be met as per the contracted commitment by the service provider to the client. A related process uh, in service management is managing the capacity, managing the capacity of the services, managing the capacity of the equipments, managing the capacity of the business. All of these become very important when you are managing services. 
your services are designed for a certain capacity it's like uh, you can take a non it example to understand it better for let's say a restaurant a restaurant is designed for handling certain amount of uh, uh, visitors for it might be designed let's say for 50 people to uh, sit at a time and then uh, enjoy the services right instead of 50 if let's say 200 people come the, the service owner on the restaurant owner would have to ask other people to stay outside similarly when we are designing the capacity of service management we would keep this in mind a business capacity is how much business it can generate for the service provider or the other indication would be how much business of the client can be handled by the service provider the service capacity what is the amount of services that can be generated it could be in the number of tickets that could be handled by the service provider or some other parameter component capacity would be how the components have been designed how many servers should be there in the data center what should be the size of the components in the network operating center what should be the security framework and what should be the size of that framework all of these would be part of the component capacity management right so that was it in capacity management we would come back again in the next video with one more topic thank you